There. Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to the Philadelphia Assembly, Stone Fort, Illinois. Happy Sabbath. It's the eighth day to Feast of Tabernacles. How's everyone doing today? Awesome. Happy Sabbath. Praise God. We had seven days. We went camping out at Ferncliff State Park over around Goreville, Illinois, here by the Shawnee National Forest. We went camping for seven days and had a blast. And now we're back for the eighth day, the solemn assembly, and then obviously tomorrow for the Sabbath. Before I go too far, let us go ahead and open up with prayer. Heavenly Father, great God of Israel, we thank you for this opportunity to gather, Lord, and we thank you for the fellowship of this feast. Great God of Israel, we just ask that you open up our hearts and our minds and give us what you would have us have today, Father to see what you would have us see and hear what you would have us hear and give us understanding of your word. For these blessings and all your blessings, we thank you in Jesus' holy name. In the name of Yahushua, amen. Welcome again, everyone, to, to Philadelphia Assemblies. Today is year 5777, to the best of the calculations here of the elders of the Philadelphia Assembly, and it's the 23rd day of the seventh month, the eighth day of the Feast of Tabernacles. And it's also, in man's eyes, the 27th of October. So now, let's get right into today's uh, period of instruction. It's going to be a small, short lesson. The title is The Eighth Day of the Feast of Tabernacles or the Ingathering. The Eighth Day of the Feast of Tabernacles or the Ingathering. We know that the Feast of Tabernacles or the Feast of Ingathering is about the gathering of God's people because all these high days are a shadow of things to come. And they all point toward our Heavenly Father, toward His plan for our salvation. And they all point to Christ Jesus. And it points to the plan that our Father has in mind for us all the way from the foundation of the world. So when you understand these feast days, it tells you His plan for our recovery to give us back the right to the tree of life. And we know that the Feast of Tabernacles is a time for the saints to be gathered. But the eighth day of the Feast of Tabernacles has its own meaning in particular, and that's what I'm going to address today. So we're going to start this off in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Again, the eighth day of Feast of Tabernacles or the end gathering. And we're just going to deal with that eighth day portion. Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23. And brother... Let's pick it right up at verse 1. 23 and verse 1. Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying... It's always, we like to point out, it's the Lord speaking unto Moses. It's not Moses coming up with something to teach Israel. Everything we have comes from the Lord. Go ahead, brother. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation, uh -huh. and these are my feasts. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. And holy convocation, you shall do no work there, and it is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your world. Yes, sir. Go ahead and continue. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their season. And that's what we did. We proclaimed the Feast of Tabernacles according to their season. And we'll put it together. We're, we're, we're already in the, the, the talks about how we calculate um, the seventh month. We go by the new moon being the full moon. Because that's the only moon that we can support that shows scripture. Every class I've ever been at, when we've looked at the calendar, we didn't even look into the full moon. We just said, ah, it can't be the full moon, man. It's got to be conjunction or sliver. But once you look in the full moon, you've got scriptures that support that. But that's for another time. We calculated from the full moon, which brings us right up to the season of tabernacles. Skip down to verse 33 and continue, brother. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying... Again, it's the Lord speaking unto Moses. Go ahead, brother. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the Feast of the Tabernacles for seven days. And, and that's just exactly what we got done doing. Feasting for seven days before the Lord. Go ahead, brother. On the first day shall be in holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work. Uh -huh. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day shall be... And holy convocation. So you're feasting for seven days where you're gathering together and you're feasting, you're putting together this huge amount of food and you're all eating together and you're making merry, you're having a party. For seven days, it's what you do. And then on the eighth day, you have a holy convocation. It's a solemn assembly. Go ahead, brother. Seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day shall be a holy convocation unto you and you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. 
It is a solemn assembly, and you shall do no servile work. And it's anything. just like the Sabbath day, you're not going to, or it's just like, like any high day, you're not going to do any servile work. If it was a Sabbath day, you'd do no work whatsoever. But this being a high, uh, high day, the eighth day of the Feast of Tabernacles, you shall do no servile work. You can cook on this day. You can prepare on this day. Go ahead, brother. These are the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering, and a meat offering, a sacrifice, and drink offerings, everything upon the, his day. And we know we don't do the burnt offerings and the meat offerings and all that anymore since Christ died and became our sacrifice for our sins or our atonement. We don't deal with the animal sacrifices anymore or them blood offerings. Go ahead, brother. Beside the Sabbaths of the Lord and beside your gifts and beside all your vows and beside all your free will offerings which you give unto the Lord. Uh -huh. Also in the 15th day of the seventh month when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. And on the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. And that's why we're here because this is our eighth day of the Feast of Tabernacles. Go ahead, brother. And you shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook, and ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. And that's exactly what we did. We didn't get the boughs of goodly trees and branches of palm trees and all this, but we rejoiced before the Lord our God for seven days. And we did have all kinds of nice wood out there. We were burning all kinds of stuff in the fire. Walnut and cedar and cedar pine and all kinds of stuff. But we didn't do all this here. But we rejoice for seven days now. Go ahead, brother. One more verse. And ye shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the, in the year. And you shall keep the Feast of Tabernacles, as we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay. For seven days in the year. Go ahead. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. And it shall be a statute forever in all your generations. And we know that the stranger or the non-physical Israelite has to do exactly what Israel's got to do. Go ahead, brother. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. And you shall celebrate it in the seventh month, and that's what we're doing. Now let's get right into the eighth day. Let's go to 2 Peter, the third chapter. 2 Peter 3. That's why we're gathered here today. And now let's look at what the eighth day represents. 2 Peter 3 and 1 verse. 2 Peter 3, 1 verse, brother. Verse 8, go ahead. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. That the, a thousand years to the Lord is as one day, and one day to the Lord is as a thousand years. So when God's counting his days, like we count our weeks, we've got ours. A thousand years is one day to the Lord. Let's go to Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter. And then we're going to take a look at this board you see before us. The last time I was privileged enough to stand before you, I told you we'd see you on the eighth day. And praise God, we're here today. Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy 32, and one verse, brother, also verse 8. 32 and 8. Go ahead. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. He set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. And we know that number to be 12. And, th and this shows you, this is something that happened from when he set the bounds, and we're going to show you, this goes all the way into the Father's kingdom. These bounds that the Lord had set. We're going to show that to you today. Now, I just want to show you real quick. I'm kind of trying to block this out a little bit so we can see. I don't know if you can tell the colors, but we the pens were kind of running out. The top numbers are blue. It goes 1 through 12. Okay? That's the bounds that the Lord set according to the number of the nation, the children of the nation of the children of Israel. 12. 12 tribes. Then you've got numbers on the bottom here go 1 through 7. The top numbers represent the creation. And man's opportunity to come back to the tree of life. You've got six days of creation. And then on that sixth day, man was created. So that's where that first day starts. Now, the first six days, like I said the last lesson, I don't know and I don't care. Were they literal days? Were they thousand-year days? I know it's an evening and a morning makes up a day. And that's what the book says. So I'm going to ride with that. But I also know that a day to the Lord is a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. On that sixth day, man was created. Adam sinned. When he sinned, he should have died. He lived to be 930 years old. 
That goes in line to me with 2 Peter, the third chapter, verse 8, that a day to the Lord is a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. And I can see that that at least started with Adam. So that's my first day is the sixth day of creation. Now, when you take seven days and you count thousand years, you've got approximately 4,000 years from mankind to Jesus and approximately 2,000 years from Jesus to now. That's where we get the timeline, 5777. At 6,000, when you hit 67, or when you hit 69.99 and the next one turns into seven, that's the return to Jesus. Now look at this. The sixth day of creation, you've got the, the years of man in God's eyes, thousand years, for his recovery. That seventh day, the return of Jesus, is the twelfth day, according to the bounds of the number of the children of Israel. Day six, man's creation. First day. Day seven, God rested. Second day, day eight, third day, day nine, fourth day, day 10, fifth day, day 11, sixth day of man, day 12, seventh day of man, return of Jesus. And we still have living flesh and blood on that day, on that 12th day, or on that seventh day, the return of Yahoshua, our Messiah, okay? Keep that in mind. After 12, that's it. After seven, which is a number of completion, that's it. This eighth day is the beginning of something new. And we're going to show you what that is. Let's continue. Let's go into Genesis, the 17th chapter, because it's important that we show you this. It's important that you understand this. Your understanding in the keeping of the feast days is showing our Heavenly Father that you want to come back to the tree of life. That you want to live and reign with him when he brings his kingdom down. That you want to make that kingdom of Jesus. When he comes and he gathers all his saints to live and rule with him and reign with him. Because we're all shooting for that first resurrection, those of us that have understanding. Genesis 17, and pick it up at verse 1, brother. We're going to do a little reading here. 17 and 1. Go ahead. And when Abraham was 90 years old. When Abram was 90 years old. The Lord hadn't changed his name yet. Go ahead, brother. The Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. So now he's telling him, the first thing you need to do is walk before me and be perfect. And we understand that being perfect in the eyes of God is the keeping of his commandments. We can show you that. That's another lesson. There's a lot of other lessons in this chapter. Go ahead, brother. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. Uh-huh. And Abram fell on his face and God talked with him saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee. And thou shalt be a father of many nations. Uh -huh. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made. And we can go into Galatians and we can see all about Abraham. We can say what the, see what the Lord says. If you're Christ, then are you Abraham's and heirs according to the promise. Remember, if you're Christ, then are you Abraham's. We're going to see here what Abraham did. Go ahead, brother. And I will make the exceeding fruitful and I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee uh -huh. and I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee and their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee now he said if you come if you walk perfect before me then I'm going to make a covenant with you he says I will establish my covenant with you and your seed after you for all generations and it's an everlasting covenant you don't take hold of this covenant that was made with Abraham. You don't have a shot at the tree of life. Go ahead and continue, brother. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger. All the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. Uh -huh. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore thou and thy seed after thee in their generation. Uh -huh. This is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. And this is not a circumcision lesson, but we need to talk about this because this is representative of the eighth day. That's one reason circumcision cannot be done away with, sisters and brothers, and it's not. That's for another time. Go ahead and continue. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. So the circumcision is a token of the covenant between God and Abraham and all of Abraham's seed, which is all nations on the earth that want to take hold of this covenant. Go ahead, brother. 
And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. The Father's kingdom, according to this count, comes on the eighth day or the new day. Nothing comes after seven. Nothing comes after 12. The Father called it the eighth day. We're going to roll with that. He could have called it the second number one day if he wanted to. He called it the eighth day. Go ahead, brother. Every man child in your generations, he that is born in the house, or, brought, or bought with money of any stranger which is not of thy seed. So he that is in the house or any servant or anything that was within the gates of Abraham had to be circumcised. Every man child, even the stranger. Go ahead. He that is born in thy house and he that is bought with, with thy money must needs be circumcised and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. Must needs be circumcised and the covenants in the flesh for an everlasting covenant one more verse brother and the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised that so shall be cut off from from his people he hath broken my covenant so the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised that so shall be cut off from his people he hath broken the covenant of course we must be circumcised in the heart too sisters and brothers that has to happen let's go to exodus the 12th chapter <coughs> Priscilla, go sit down, please. Exodus, the 12th chapter. Exodus 12. And let's pick it up, brother, at verse 43. Exodus 12 and verse 43. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof. Uh huh. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, Oh, oh 44. Sorry. But every man servant that is bought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. You can't eat the Passover. You cannot partake in the Passover, which is partaking in Jesus, if you're a man and you're not circumcised. Go ahead, brother. A foreigner and an hired servant shall not eat thereof. Uh -huh. In one house shall it be eaten. Thou shalt not carry forth out of the flesh abroad out of the house neither shall you break a bone thereof all the congregation of Israel shall keep it so that's for all the congregation of Israel and that's the way they keep it go ahead and continue and when a stranger shall sojourn with thee now anyone other than Israel physical Israel that wants to serve God and wants to take a chance of getting into his kingdom go ahead brother and we'll keep the Passover to the Lord let all his males be circumcised. Let all his males be circumcised. Go ahead. And then let him come near and keep it. And he shall be as one that is born in the land. For no uncircumcised person shall eat their own. No uncircumcised person can partake in the Passover. And there's scriptures that tell you with the Father's kingdom. When Je or the, when in Jesus' kingdom. Yehoshua's kingdom. When he returns. And he comes back to this earth. He is going to set the priesthood, the Levitical priesthood back up. And one of the reasons the book says he's going to do it is because they let strangers into the tabernacle. They were uncircumcised in the heart and the flesh. So now he's saying, this time you're going to do it right when I'm here so I can clean it all up to present it to the Father. This is great news, sisters and brothers. This isn't some kind of, oh man, you got to go get circumcised. This is a blessing. Go ahead and continue, brother. Read through 49. One law shall be to him that is homeborn and unto the stranger that sojourneth among them. And again, this isn't a circumcision lesson, but this is important because the circumcision is representative of the eighth day. And we're going to show you that. First, let's go to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. And I know I went a little bit long, longer than I thought I was going to go today, but we determined that we were going to take one lesson, so it gave me a little bit more time. I didn't have to run. But we're, we're more than halfway through. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15, and let's pick it up at verse 49. 15 and 49. Go ahead, brother. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Uh -huh. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. So flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of our heavenly Father. Flesh and blood cannot inherit that kingdom. He's coming and bringing his kingdom down. Jesus is presenting him the saints in this earth. And the father is going to bring his kingdom down. And at the time he does that, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. 
Go ahead and continue. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. So Paul's saying, I show you a mystery. We're not going to all be dead, but we're all going to get some kind of change. Go ahead. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. And we just dealt with that trumpet at the memorial, uh, memorial of the blowing of trumpets at the, the first day of this month. Go ahead and continue. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. See, this body, this, this corruptible body must put on an incorruptible body. And this mortal body has to become immortal. That's how you live and reign with God forever or you burn forever. One of the two. Because your body's now immortal. It doesn't die. Go ahead and continue. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. So when this corruptible is put on the incorruption and the mortal, the immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Because once all living things have gotten that spiritual change, all living beings, all us humans, we get that spiritual body, there's no more flesh and blood. That's the eighth day. Let's go to Revelation, the 20th chapter. Revelation, the 20th chapter. And now it's all going to tie in and make some sense. Revelation 20, and we're going to pick it right up in verse 1, brother. 20 and 1. Go ahead. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Uh huh. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. So at this time, the return of Jesus, Satan's locked up for a thousand years, for the entire reign of Christ. Go ahead. And cast him into the bottomless pit. And shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the, the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. So after a thousand years, Satan's loose because there's flesh and blood on earth that Satan's not tempting or proving. They're going to learn how to fear God and keep his commandments. And those that have proven to be righteous, Satan's going to get cut loose at the end of the seventh day. And he's going to be allowed to tempt and he's going to be allowed to put wickedness in their hearts or to dangle that carrot, so to speak, to prove those saints. The ones that pass that endure, the Lord has a reward for. The ones that don't pass that do not endure, you got a reward for that, too. It's called the lake of fire. Go ahead and continue, brother. And I saw thrones and they sat upon them. And, judge, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. And which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, uh -huh. neither re had received his, his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Go ahead. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Uh -huh. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no, more, hath, hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So that's what we're shooting for. We're shooting for that first resurrection so that even if we're alive, running for our lives through the through the tribulation, when the master returns, we see the dead in Christ rise first, they get their change and then we're going to get our change and we're going to rise with them and meet God in the air and come back down. That's representative of the first seven days of the Feast of Tabernacles. And you can see that spread out throughout the feast. You can see that hints of that in unleavened bread. During Pentecost, it's because they all tie together. It's all about our gathering. It's all about our being reconciled to our Heavenly Father and having the right to the tree of life. That's what this life is all about. It's a proving grounds for our hearts so that when we live forever, we're either going to be on the right side with God or we're going to be in the fire. That's what this life is all about right now. Go ahead and tell us where you're at. Continue, brother. Verse 7. Uh-huh. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison uh -huh. and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. Yes, sir. Gog and Magog to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Uh -huh. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Now you've got Gog and Magog, also known as the army from the north. At this particular time, when Jesus is here, they're going to come and try to come up against him. And that's going to be easy. Jesus, boom, it's over with. It's done. 
Because what cannot inherit the kingdom of God? What has to go in the fire or the right side of the kingdom? It can't be flesh and blood. It's got to be that spiritual body. Go ahead and continue, brother. Verse 9. No. Verse 10. And the... And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So now after that thousand years, Satan gets his reward, and he, he knows this is coming already. That's why he's so angry as he goes to and fro, seeking whom he can devour, because he's trying to take as many saints with him, the last great act of defiance, before God deals with him and gives him his just punishment. Go ahead, brother. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat upon it, for whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. Uh -huh. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their words. So now you've got the second resurrection, and you've got everyone else that has died that did not make that first resurrection... And those that had died, that had lived in the kingdom of Christ for a thousand years, that were proved wicked and got killed, you got all of them coming up in the second resurrection. You got all the other ones got the change already. And they're servants of the Most High, servants of Christ Jesus and our Heavenly Father. And God and those servants that lived and reigned with Him are sitting on thrones and are judging the dead that didn't make the first resurrection. All this is taking place before the Father's kingdom. Go ahead, brother. Verse 13. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and the and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. Uh -huh. And they were judged every man according to their words. Yes, sir. Go and ahead. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second this death. This is the second death. There is no more death. There's only two deaths. The death of this cardinal body, this flesh and blood, that you go camping for seven days and don't shower for two. And you rub your crook of your hand like this and that dirt's everywhere. Because this body is constantly, constantly corrupted. That's why the older you get, you start looking at it. Do I look 30 years old to you? No, because I'm not. I'm a lot older than that. And I look the age because my body's corrupting. Go ahead and continue, brother. Verse 15. Yes, sir. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake. See, of if you're not found written in the book of life or you don't make the kingdom in God's favor, pleasing in his sight, you go in the lake of fire. Now, let's go back to Genesis, the 21st chapter. And we're almost there. These are some quick ones. Genesis 21. Genesis 21. Genesis 21. And brother verse 4, 21 and 4. Go ahead. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight years old, and God had been Being how old? Eight years or eight days eight old. Eight days old. And God had commanded as God had commanded him. Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was born at eight days old, as God had commanded him. My young son circumcised on the eighth day, as God had commanded me. And the circumcision is something that's a token of the covenant. Now, why did God carry the covenant on with Isaac? Go ahead a few chapters and go to Genesis, the 26th chapter. We're going to read one verse, brother, verse 5. Then we're going to end this lesson. This is why the Lord told Isaac, the famine came into the land. Isaac started to go into a land and the Lord said, no, I don't want you to go down into Egypt. I'm going to tell you where I want you to go. And I'm going to continue this covenant that I started with your father. I'm going to carry it through you and your bloodline, Isaac. And this is why. Verse 5, 26 and 5. Go ahead. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. The very same covenant that we're under is the one that the Lord made with Abraham. But that's for another lesson. We can prove to you the Ten Commandments didn't start with the nation of Israel. That's where the Lord wanted a whole nation on board to teach all the other nations. But it didn't start with Israel. Abraham obeyed my voice, kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Circumcision. On the eighth day is representative of no more flesh and blood and our Heavenly Father bringing His kingdom down. That's what the circumcision on the eighth day represents. No more flesh and blood. Let's go read that and this will be at Revelation, the 21st chapter. <laughs> Revelation 21, <coughs> excuse 
confuse me. And brother, we're going to read the first couple of verses and then we'll skip. 21, Revelation 21 and verse 1. Go ahead. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. See, when Jesus comes, he's burning up a third part of the trees. He's doing stuff to the water and everything. This earth is polluted and filthy. Look at the junk they're spraying on us, calling it. Oh, there's nothing wrong with that. They're trying to control the weather with these contrails and all this. and Or, I'm sorry, the chemtrails. Contrails evaporate. Chemtrails turns into a big haze on a beautiful sunny day. This earth has got to get cleaned up, and that's what Jesus is coming to do. He's coming to not only pre prepare an absolute clean place for our Heavenly Father, but absolute righteous people for our Heavenly Father. Because our Heavenly Father is so righteous, he can't even deal with man. Go ahead and continue, brother. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from, coming down from God out of heaven. Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Uh -huh. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Now for us it seems like when Jesus returns, that's 7,000 years of history. For God it ain't nothing. It's a snap of a finger. He's getting ready to get done with this eighth day, take saints to live and reign with him, and move on to his next project. And if you're not part of that plan because you're wicked in your heart, you got the lake of fire and it's no big skin off his, no sweat off his forehead. He throws you in the fire and then he looks at what he's going to do next and he goes, come on, saints, let's go. Whether or not you make the kingdom, you want to kick against the Sabbath day, you want to kick against whatever you want to kick against, you're not kicking against sound teaching, you're kicking against God. Go ahead and continue, brother. And I heard, oh, verse four. Uh -huh. And God shall wipe away all... Tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. There shall be no more death, because death and hell, victory is swallowed up. Death is swallowed up in victory. Jesus took care of all that. Go ahead. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are, are passed away. For the former things are passed away. Skip down to 12 and continue, brother. And had a wall great and high, and had 12 gates. This is the kingdom of God. It had a wall great and high, and had how many gates? 12. I don't read scripture and put my own twist on them. The Lord said he set the bounds of the nation according to the number of the children of Israel. 12. I teach you sound doctrine because I don't teach anything I don't understand and can't prove. If I'm going to say something up here that I can't prove, I'm going to tell you that. Go ahead and continue, brother. And at the tw and at the gates, twelve angels uh -huh. and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Twelve gates with the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. And you've also got a foundation. You can read it on your own. A couple verses later, with the with the names of the twelve apostles. Everything by twelve. Skip down to twenty one, brother, and continue. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. Twelve gates with twelve pearls. Not one pearly gate with Peter standing in front of it with a key. Go ahead and continue, brother. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. No temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Yehoshua. The Father and the Lamb. Not even going to need any light. Go ahead and continue, brother. And the city had no need for the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it. The glory of Yeshua did lighten it. And what? And the Lamb is the light thereof. And Yehoshua, Yehoshua is the light thereof. You've got our Father. you got Christ Jesus. Yeshua, Yehoshua. Yahweh, Jehovah. Call him what you want to call him. Your Heavenly Father. And our Messiah, that sacrifice, reconciled those that endure until the end to him. And this is the moment we're waiting for, sisters and brothers, to live and reign with Christ and then be a part of our Heavenly Father's kingdom. Go ahead and continue, brother. Verse 24. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. Or it could say the nations of them which endured until the end will walk in the light of it. Go ahead. Notice it's saying light of it. 
Yeah, all precepts roll in together. Light. Everything's about light. 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 That's why we go new moon. We go full moon because that's complete light. It rules the night. All these precepts roll into one, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and continue. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. Uh huh. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night. There shall there. be no night. There ain't gonna be no darkness, no wickedness, nothing but righteousness. Light constantly, the Father, the Lamb. Go ahead. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. Uh huh. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth. Neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh the lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. And at this time, sisters and brothers, at this time, our Heavenly Father's plan for the recovery of mankind is complete. And that is the eighth day where there is no more flesh and blood. And that is what the circumcision is represented of. When you cut that foreskin on the eighth day and you lose that flesh, it's representative of losing this flesh on the eighth day when our Heavenly Father's kingdom is given is given to us through Christ Jesus. All right, thank you for the opportunity to rightly divide God's word, and I hope that somebody got something from this lesson. We're going to go ahead and shut this off, and we're going to get into our next portion of instruction here.